Welcome back. Today we start our voyage here in the blossoming industrial sauna. It's still sort of coming up to speed. You can see that we do have some steam, but it's not enough to keep everything from breaking. But I'm doing this very much on purpose. We're using all this beautiful salt water in here and pumping it into two metal refineries. And when the metal refinery ends up processing all of this coolant, it starts superheating it. And you'll notice, for instance, this brine is 270 kilos worth at 167 degrees. So all we have to do to release all that, other than continuously waiting for this pipe to break, is click empty storage. And once we empty the storage, it releases a bunch of steam that sort of helps us get going. You can see here this metal refinery is breaking right then and the salt water was going down. But to get the rest of that out, once again, we can just hit that empty storage button. So I've been using this method to get as much steam and temperature in here as possible. You'll notice some of these tiles are still very cold. In fact, this whole area was very cold before we started. As these tiles gain more and more heat, we'll be better off keeping all that heat inside and thus we'll have a bunch more steam. We're also gonna need to put down a bunch of temperature shift plates. I like using igneous rock because it's slow heating and we're not feeding hatches in this colony. So igneous rock, I think, fits the bill perfectly. Now this is gonna take a very long time. I know you've seen me do these before and quite frankly, they take most of an episode for the dupes to be able to finish these. So we'll be working on some other stuff while the dupes are doing these in the background. Another good thing is because there's not insulation on the bottom or on the sides of some of this industrial sauna, we can back these temperature shift plates right up to the edges of the abyssalite. The abyssalite won't care, but it will definitely help us out in transferring more heat around the sauna. So the good news and the bad news. The good news is we have a lot of temperature shift plates in here. The bad news, we actually ran out of igneous rock. Yes, we ran out of almost 300 tons of igneous rock. And unfortunately, you may have noticed this place is mined out. Luckily, we have a backup location here on Frostine. They're not using their igneous rock either, and they have 425 tons. So I think we'll send 100 tons over, give or take. Over to raw mineral, igneous rock, allow manual use, go to town. Remember, the whole idea of finishing this industrial sauna was to move all this sand production, and that way we don't have the heat issues that we are dealing with now. The issue, though, is all of that sand is being shipped by conveyor rails. Well, the sand that's going to come out of here is going to be awfully close to the temperature of the steam. And we don't want to be shipping that via conveyor rails from this side of the colony all the way to this side of the colony. So it looks like one of the jobs that we have today is recreating the Debris Cooler 5000. Now, ideally, it would be able to fit somewhere in here. We don't have a lot of space, and I'm not sure if this is going to be enough, but we're going to try. And unfortunately... We are now in a vacuum again, so unless the device is sitting in a pool of water, it will very quickly overheat. So I think what we're going to do is pump some of this brine from down here, start dumping it on the volcano areas again, because all of this refined metal is very, very hot. Here's what we've come up with to make sure all that sand gets down to the necessary temperature. Allow me to introduce to you the Debris Cooler 4000. Patent pending because we're not quite sure if this is going to work the way we want it to work. We're going to bring in all the sand across this rail and it's going to go around and around. And if it's too warm, it gets sent all the way back around again. And remember, this bridge will not be able to put more sand onto the rail until there's available room. In other words, until some sand has cooled down enough and then sent on its merry way. We're gonna have a nice strong cooling loop in here. We're not sure what material we're gonna use yet, but it's probably gonna be polluted water. This room doesn't have to get that cold. In fact, across this rail system, we want it to be 20 to 25 degrees. And that way we continue to make sure that we don't heat this area up anymore. And by itself, this would kind of work. We're gonna seal this in. And so the temperature in here will be fairly well regulated. Except for the fact right now we'd be using oxygen and carbon dioxide as a part of our thermal transfer environment. And quite frankly, it's just not the best. Not only does oxygen, for instance, have a very low specific heat capacity, it's got an okay thermal conductivity, but it's only one kilo worth of oxygen in each tile. Whereas if we use polluted water, well, that's a thousand kilos worth of thermal capacity. And while it doesn't have a very high thermal conductivity, it is much higher specific heat capacity. 
so it'll be able to hold on to that chill for much longer. So to start off with, I think we're just gonna dump a bunch of polluted water in here. We're gonna fill this whole thing up and then we're gonna use the same polluted water to fill the coolant loop. Now, as long as we can maintain steam in here or it's sitting in its own bath of water, we'll be okay. For now, just to make sure the thermo aqua tuner doesn't turn on, we're gonna turn it to above 1000 degrees and that way we have a good fill on the coolant loop. We've also started the process of bringing the ceramic and sand production in here. Now we're gonna be using two rock crushers and that way, anytime we need sand, we have two rock crushers working on it. We also have two kilns connected to the ceramic production. So whenever the smart storage bin is not full, it sends out a red signal. We then flip that to a green and activate the two kilns, or in the sand's case, the two rock crushers. The automation then turns on the kilns, which we're saying, hey, create ceramic forever using clay and coal. And then the rock crushers are gonna create that sand from the ceramic. Now, the great thing is we're gonna be bringing the coal and the clay in via these conveyor loaders. I think these positions work. And one auto super is gonna be able to handle all of the loading and unloading. Now the clay is gonna be shipped directly from the oxygen center after the deodorizers turn the polluted oxygen into clay. So we're gonna to need to continue this rail all the way down and we'll bring it in just like this. Now the coal, if you remember, is gonna be coming from our sage hatches. So I think it's finally time to put in the other conveyor loader to ship off the coal. We are gonna have shipping rails all over the place. And the great thing is we have so much ore and so much refined metal, we never have to worry about it on this colony. And then the coal will end up in this conveyor receptacle. And the entire setup is only taking one run of conductive wire that's being supplied by this large power transformer. With our debris cooler almost full, I think it's time to start filling up the cooling loop. Easy enough, we'll bridge it on just the same. Now it's going to take a minute. We have a lot of construction projects going along to include a lot of rail. And one of the reasons is we just don't have a lot of mechatronics engineers. So we're going to take this Andy here and make them a mechatronics engineer as well. It only puts their morale requirement up to 15, which is plenty fine by me. While the dupes are doing that, I figured it'd be a good time to update on Frostine. Miko and Jay Ray are doing great over here. They live off of squirrel omelets and we even added another arbor tree to get a little bit more lumber we're using wood burners as sort of a backup power solution they're only set on 70 30. our primary still comes from hydrogen at 90 60. but one of the issues we're going to come across is all of this carbon dioxide now it wouldn't be too bad if i could throw a carbon skimmer in here and just deal with it that way Unfortunately, Frostine is a credit to its namesake and is still very, very cold. The water sieve and carbon skimmer solution wouldn't work because all the water would burst in the pipes. Eventually, these wood burners and this rock crusher will heat up the surrounding area. So I've prepared a little area right here. It doesn't matter if Frostine has a bunch of carbon dioxide until it starts putting our dupes at risk, which it's only going to do if it starts raising at these levels. But by the time it gets this high, it should be warm enough to sustain the water in the pipes. They've also been doing some digging in their off time. You can see we've got most of this planetoid carved out. One major area is up here. And remember, that's where our beautiful saltwater geyser is, but even it's being punished with all the chill on Frostine. You can see the saltwater here is down to about zero degrees over here and goes all the way down to the fact that it starts forming ice. Eventually, we're gonna use this saltwater geyser for something we just don't know yet. In the meantime, though, we still have plenty of polluted water. All of the polluted water coming from this cool slush geyser is feeding these two trees, providing the oxygen for Frostine and feeding these 14 trees. And it's still such a surplus that we're sending some of the excess oxygen over from Frostine to supplement our oxygen usage here. We won't be doing that forever, but I really wanted to oxygenate this entire planetoid and I figured all the extra oxygen over there would help. Our debris cooler has plenty of water, so we're ready to seal it up. We still have a few more pieces to build and I really wanna pick up all this debris. I wanted to highlight that somehow there's 8.8 .8 tons worth of water at 150 C sitting in this metal refinery. As soon as we empty it, it's gonna explode with steam in here. What's happening is all that brine and salt water came in here and then flashed the water. This is gonna be good. Sort of anticlimactic, but it does look like we're finally getting enough steam in here. Down here, we have 53 kilos worth of pressure. Up here, it's still 
heading that way. That might have done the trick. And these temperature shift plates aren't going to stand a chance with that much hot steam. Well, it only took about an episode and a half. We have 16 kilos worth of steam pressure throughout this entire industrial sauna. I was going to put the third steep turbine in here and I realized, oops, not enough room. I put the ladder in the wrong spot. So we're going to move the ladder, shift over the steam turbines. And that way we definitely have room for three total steam turbines. Now we may not need them, but the empty space was bothering me. So I had this rail system sort of messed up. So I have to get in here and repoint that shutoff. I had it something like this. And the way you want it is the output of the shutoff continues the loop. So we want it somewhere like this. Now we're gonna have to move a lot of this around because I have to check the temperature here. This is what I get for doing things sort of ad hoc. So it's gonna come in here and then we'll have it go out and filter all the way around until it meets back up with this point. Give me one second. After a quick rework, we have it working well again. I was sitting there stumped for a few minutes because it still wasn't flowing correctly. And it's because I had a rail in between the input and the output of the conveyor shutoff. But now we have it set on. If it's above 25 degrees, enable this conveyor shutoff and send it around in the loop. Now, the idea is this thermo aqua tuner is going to get this water cold enough to where all this sand should drop in temperature fairly quickly. We're going to see because if we can't get the correct amount of sand output, we're going to have to change systems. I think we're going to help the thermo aqua tuner out a little bit by putting some polluted ice in here. Yeah, it's going to overflow a little bit and we're going to make a mess, but that a little bit of a chill will help this get where it needs to go quicker. So we just had a fresh batch of sand exit the debris cooler 4000 and this looks like it's going to work perfectly. The sand is coming in at about 96, 97 degrees. By the time it hits the top, it's at 70. So that means it's losing 25 degrees per rotation. So after just three rotations through the system, the sand will already be ready to send out. What's even better, even though we just got this online, we're already starting to get a backstock of all the sand. I mean, you can see here, there's more sand coming and we haven't even used all the sand from the last shipment. In other words, the system is working just fine. And that's still with the polluted water sitting at 27 degrees. We have this thermo sensor set on zero, so eventually this polluted water will be zero. So we'll check back on it a little bit and see if there's any difference. But that got me thinking. I want to do the same thing to all this gold and cobalt. So you know what's better than one debris cooler 4000? Two debris cooler 4000s. And I think we'll put this one right here. While we're working on the second debris cooler, it's time to get our permanent metal refinery section going. The problem is we need a coolant to pass through these radiant liquid pipes. So once again, that's where our beautiful crude oil is going to come into play. But the great thing about our setup here is that we actually don't need regular refined metals. I'm pretty sure that we'll have all the gold and all the cobalt we'll need. So we'll actually have two metal refineries both churning out as much steel as we can. But I figure it's probably good to set up some more automation. We already know that the limiting factors for steel production is lime. So why don't we create a couple of bins that keep our refined carbon full and what's going to be our iron. Step one, we're going to need more steel to make this work because right now we're down to 50 kilos. So why don't we get our metal refineries coolant filled so we can at least get some steel going to finish up more auto sweepers and the such. By the way, our sand line is already 100% filled with 29 degree sand. Needless to say, I think we can bump this down. So we're going to say once the sand is down to 20 degrees, which is once again, not going to be a problem at all. And if we wanted to, we could cool our entire base using sand. Okay, I may have gone a bit overboard with the automation on our steel production. These two metal refiners are responsible for iron. This smart storage bin is automated to hold iron exactly a ton of it. These two storage bins are full of iron ore, and whenever this smart storage bin is not full, it'll activate these two metal refineries that are both set on iron ore to iron. Then down here, we have our three primary ingredients for steel. Both of these metal refineries are set on steel forever, of course, and this smart storage bin is set to hold 20 tons of refined carbon. When it doesn't have enough refined carbon, it activates this kiln, whereas this auto sweeper takes some coal and throws it in the kiln. Well, here's where it gets even more beautiful. We're getting all of our coal directly off the line that we're using to create ceramic. And since we're at it, we took a leg right off of our sand and are automating glass production as well. Well, as soon as I put this knot gate back in. But it'll take sand right off the line and keep feeding it to this glass forge as long as this smart storage bin is not full of 20 tons of glass. 
So there's glass, iron, refined carbon, steel, ceramic, and sand production 100% complete. And needless to say, now we have enough steel to finish off this debris chiller. And we also need to provide some cooling for these steam turbines because, you know, bad things are happening. The great thing about this system is it's producing a lot of heat. You can see down here it's 185 degrees. So why don't we start with the thermo aqua tuner to cool down the steam turbines and get that loop going. It is absolutely wonderful to have an infinite supply of gold. I highly recommend it. And considering it's one of the best for radiant liquid pipes and the such, we are definitely living high on the hog. There's those two loops. We'll get them finished being built and then we'll throw some of our excess polluted water in there. And then we're going to be able to automate the chilling down of all this beautiful gold and cobalt. I noticed this sand was sitting at 13 degrees. So I want to demonstrate how effective this system is. So we're going to put a conveyor chute right here just for temporaries. Actually, never mind. It looks like we're due for a run of sand anyways. This sand is coming in here at 142 degrees. Let's watch it go around. And right before it gets to the end, it's now at 63. It's losing 80 degrees worth of heat in one run. The polluted water in this tank is sitting at 0.7 degrees. Another update on Frostine. Our carbon dioxide is getting to the danger level. And so I thought I'd give it a try. It's minus 1.6, but it gets a little too cold right here at the bottom. And I realized, why am I trying to sieve it here? We already have fresh and polluted water. So we can use the carbon skimmer sort of in the default way it's meant to. We'll just bring fresh water in and then send the polluted water back out. We'll keep it all in insulated pipes. And that way, by the time it comes out of the carbon skimmer, it still won't be cold enough to flash in the pipes. At least that's the theory. We'll see how that goes. And this seems to be working just fine. Water in, polluted water out. And we've even set up a bridge here so that the carbon skimmer can keep working. It's going to take all the polluted water from here first to go over to our main planetoid. And that way the carbon skimmer doesn't get backed up and not being able to scrub more carbon dioxide. And just like that, both cooling loops are in and working great. Speaking of working great, look at the amount of work these steam turbines are putting in. Each one of them is producing over 700 watts. This one because this gold volcano is going off is producing 840 watts. It is 202 degrees down here. We're going to have to keep an eye on it. Maybe we'll add another steam turbine because our max temperature for most of the equipment is 275. I don't think it's going to be a problem right now. Well, maybe a small problem. We were producing so much steel that the oil that we're using is coolant flash to petroleum. That's okay. Now we're just going to add the petroleum right back into the coolant loop. Well, that looks really nice now. And you can tell the reason why this metal refinery is coolant didn't get cool enough is because it's surrounded by three other metal refineries whereas the other metal refineries have all this steam escape room whereas this metal refinery only sees the heat and it's sort of trapped by the other three not that you could tell a difference in the temperature display but you get my point nothing to really worry about now though because we've ran out of lime so now we're finally at that lime bottleneck so we're not going to be creating steel and iron flat out anymore which will eventually allow this industrial sauna to cool down just a little bit. As for our second debris cooler, we're waiting for this room just to cool down a little bit more. The coolant is at 27 and the room itself is at 32. So we'll start getting everything constructed and get ready to send all the material through it. A couple of changes I've made since the last update is we removed one of the rock crushers. And the reason why is because when a proper mechatronics engineer is working this rock crusher, they're actually able to create the sand fast enough for what we need in a cycle. We're also having a little bit of power issues every once in a while, and it's because we're running so many more thermo aqua tuners. I'm not too worried about it though, because it is only every once in a while, and it's only because these thermo aqua tuners are having to run a lot more right now just to get everything down to appropriate temps. Once all this water is chilled down, it's only gonna have to run a fraction of the time. And long term, I'm really not worried about power for this colony because eventually we're going to be turning all this oil into petroleum and feeding it to our rocket program and to even more petroleum generators. Next up for the industrial sauna is moving the natural gas generators over. This is going to be somewhat of a bigger project too because we have to move all of these pipes and the carbon dioxide. But that's one of the benefits of natural gas generators is you can actually direct where you want the carbon dioxide to go. So we're going to put our natural gas generators on this level here and we have enough room for two gas reservoirs 
and I know what you're thinking. Well, Echo, that's not enough gas reservoirs to hold all the natural gas between dormancy periods of this natural gas geyser. Well, fear not, because while some of you would say, hey, just put in some infinite gas storage and take care of it all. Well, you know what I say to that? Why do that when you have so much real estate? Look at all this built-in gas storage. All in insulated pipes. That way the heat from the natural gas geyser doesn't go anywhere. And then we'll have two little buffer tanks here. Absolutely perfect. I was really looking forward to showing you all the natural gas in this beautiful amount of pipes. Unfortunately, I accidentally vented it all the way up here to the vacuum of space. Yeah, that's pretty par for the course around here. But right now, even an accident like that can't get me down. Because look at the amount of messages we have. For the first time, probably since the beginning of this colony, we don't have anything breaking, overheating, dupes aren't in danger, everything's doing great. Every once in a while, I might get a long commute. So I've started using the 100 tons of plastic we have to upgrade all of our ladders. That's one of the benefit of cooling your entire base with your oxygen supply. We can run plastic ladders just about everywhere. So any place that the duplicates come a lot, we're upgrading all the ladders. And although a plastic ladder doesn't melt to 159 degrees, and it's close to being able to put them inside the industrial sauna, I don't think we'll push our luck. Of course, That'd be a great way to make some naphtha. As for our gold and cobalt cooling system, we're ready to go. We'll start with the gold and see how it does. Refined metal, gold, and on its way it goes. As soon as I connect the rail. So we can see the gold coming in at 146 degrees. Now let's follow a little bit. Oh, 159 degrees. <laughs> it's already down to 20 degrees. Look at this beautiful cold gold. What are we doing with it? Well, it falls a conveyor rail, like everything else in this colony, and gets dumped off at our infinite storage. I see no reason why we can't also grab the cobalt, and the cobalt is almost as good as a conductor as gold, so this system's gonna work out really well. The great thing about this system too, is these volcanoes don't produce the gold constantly. So after it gets through the back stock, we have eight tons of cobalt here and 12 tons of gold. These rails will remain pretty much empty, which means this thermal aqua tuner is not going to have to do much work at all. Now, it looks like the cobalt, because it's not as good of a conductor, is having to go through twice. The first pass brought it from 160 degrees down to about 45. Still, not shabby at all. This is a design that I will now use forever. It is relatively easy to build, and when you attach it next to a industrial sauna, you don't even need a separate steam turbine. You can just use the thermo aqua tuner inside the industrial sauna just like this. In fact, this industrial sauna might be one of the favorites that I've ever built. And look at all the room for activities. This is absolutely a thing of beauty. So far, here are all the rails on this colony. Here are the pipes. Here are the gas pipes. And here's the power. So far, I think it looks pretty good, all things considered. Quick update on the channel. We've moved from streaming live on YouTube to over on Twitch, which is especially beneficial for games like Cult of the Lamb that has Twitch integration in it. But don't you worry, all the VODs are going to go right back over to YouTube after 24 hours. So we'll be streaming on Twitch on Wednesday evenings and Saturday mornings. So you should see those videos on YouTube Thursday evening and Sunday morning. Which, come to think about it, I may move that one to say Monday morning. Because we have our standard series, like this video here, that posts on Sunday. I don't know, we'll see. So I hope you can come over to Twitch one day and check it out. Right now, the two games we're playing is Cult of the Lamb and Oxygen Not Included. I had a great time in this episode because for some reason, everything's just working. I can't explain it either. I look forward to hearing what you have to say in the comments below. I do read them all. So until next time, I'll talk to you soon.